hey guys welcome back to my channel in today's video we we'll look at 15 different things that we need to do once we install linux mint now some of the actions we'll be taking are going to be via the gui or the graphical user interface and others are going to be on the terminal the first thing we need to do is to update the system packages and then we'll move to the next step of upgrading the system now we could use the update manager so if we go to the menu here and you can just search for update it's right here the update manager and if you come in here if there's any updates you can just click on install updates we can also open the terminal and we can use the command sudo apt update and provide the password now once the once you have, you're done with the update, you can do the upgrade. You can use sudo up, upgrade to dash y for yes. And that should upgrade the system for us. Once that step is done, the next thing you might want to do is to install additional drivers. And you can use the, let me minimize this. If you go to the menu and look for search for driver you see that you see that we have driver manager here and this one should look for any drivers that are available and if there is any available drivers you can go ahead and uh, install them so right now there's no drivers needed so we can close this out uh, the other thing you might want to do is to install any uh, essential software that you use such as uh, VLC if you use uh, Firefox and stuff like that you can install that uh, let's just use the terminal for this and let's say you needed to install VLC you do sudo app install VLC and that should install it for us the next thing we'll do after this is done is to make sure that we configure the update manager such that we can do uh, automated uh, updates so we'll go to the menu here we'll go under preferences and then we want to look for the let's just look for the update update manager and in here what you want to do is uh, edit preferences and under automation right here you can select this option to automate or automatically update the system so you just toggle this to on uh, it's asking for the password just put in the password and now it's automated and the updates are going to be done uh, automatically for us so i'm going to close this and i'm going to close this uh, the next thing you might want to look into is to install multimedia codecs and there's two different commands we can run to make sure that we have the multimedia uh, codecs let me open the terminal again and let me clear this so the first command is sudo apt install ubuntu uh, restricted uh, extras so what this does is it's used to to add support for multimedia formats and also install all media codecs plus java and uh, flash plugins so let's see if we're able to run that the other command is sudo app install mint net uh, codec okay so for this is saying that it's already on the newest version so nothing was installed we can also configure the system settings you can customize your system settings uh, stuff such as your background you can change your uh, background so you can change this desktop background you can also change or customize your phone your icons your themes and all that and this is under your if you go to your menu as well then you go to preferences you have different options here background for instance i can change the, uh, the background right now i'm using this one i could change it to this one and as you can see it changed 
And there's other things you can do as well. You can change the date and time if you needed to. You have an uh, option to customize your mouse, keyboard, your themes and all that. So that's why you change that. Let's look at the next item. So if you're, if you're gonna be using your computer to access the internet, you might wanna make sure that you have a valid IP address. And there's two ways to check that. You can use the GUI and you can also use the terminal. Uh, if I go to the menu and I type network here, I get this pop-up window and under wired, I can click on this icon to go to the settings, but it also displays the current information as far as the IP address information, your default gateway or your router, and then DNS. If you needed to change any of this, you can click on this gear icon for your settings. You can come to IPv4. Here you can change it to manual if you needed to. Right now I'm using DHCP, but you have the option to change it to manual and you can input your IP address. Right now I'm just using DHCP and here you can put your DNS server information. So let's cancel this. And if you needed to turn it off, you can just um, toggle it to off. And to check this on the terminal, you should run IP address command. And this shows you the IP address and for which interface. If you need to check connectivity, you can ping like a Google, for instance. And I'm receiving replies, so it can reach the internet. You can also specify the number of pings. You can say ping-c for count, and say, let's say two, which will send two pings. So the other thing you can check here is the DNS. You can verify your DNS. You can use NS lookup. And then Google, let's say, uh, let's say google.com. And you can see that it was able to translate google.com to this IP. Moving on, we will look at, um, if you needed to use like system monitoring, system monitoring tools, such as HTOP, you can install those as well if they're not installed. And here on the terminal, the command to do that is sudo app install. You can say htop. And that will install htop for you and you can open it using htop. And you can also come to the menu here and say htop and it should be there. Okay, next we'll Look at SSH. Now, if you're going to be accessing your system remotely, you'll need to have SSH enabled. And what you can do here is you can check the status of it to see that it's enabled and uh, it's running. The command is system CTL status SSH. And as you can see here, it's active and running. Now, if it wasn't started, you can use the system CTL start. SSH and that should start SSH for you. Now, if you needed to use VPN on your system, you'll need to install it. Now, that's an, another whole video. I do have a video on how to install and enable VPN. I can provide, I'll provide a link in my description for that process. The other thing you might need is if you're going to be running window up, if you're going to be running Windows applications, you'll need to use an, um, a tool such as Wine. So you'll need to install that tool. Let's see how we install it. So to install Wine, just use sudo apt install Wine. And with Wine, you should be able to open Windows uh, applications. Once this is done, we'll look at a tool for analyzing your disk usage. So we'll take a look at a command for installing a disk usage analyzer. Now, the next thing you might want to do is to install a disk usage analyzer. And to do that, you'll we'll use the command sudo apt install. And that installs it for us. It's already installed in this system. So the, the other item that is important is to, is to set up a backup solution. Um, in most cases, you, you'll use time shift which allows us to create system snapshots. 
especially if you're going to be making changes you want to make sure you have at least a backup before you make those changes now we can access time shift from the menu here so go to the menu and just type time shift and this is it right here put in your password and in here you have the option to create a snapshot you just click on this and that should allow you to create a, a snapshot now with the time shift there's two things we can do here we can uh, create that snapshot which acts will act as a restore point we can also we can also set up uh, regular backups by going to settings and then we can do like a schedule or set up a schedule in here on how often we want to do backups so i'm not going to be doing that so i'm going to cancel that again so you have those two options and if it comes to a point where you need to do like a restore you need you can select one of your snapshots and then click on restore to restore a system so those are the 15 different things you need to do once you install linux mint so i hope this information has been helpful i'll catch you in my next video thanks bye